Hello and welcome back to Scale Me Down and to another episode of the scratch built two seat radio control Spitfire. As ever please like and subscribe to support the channel and press the bell icon for notifications as to when new content is released. And you can see that the fuselage is nearly finished now, the moulding's completed with its internal framework and also there are a couple of mouldings here for the interested club members Graham and Jim that were interested in also building this model. The wings are largely done and all that's realistically left to do now is the covering and finishing, the fitting of the radio gear and the wing centre section and that's what we're going to start with in this episode. Here I've produced a mould on our 3D printer for the belly pan area and that's been primed with two pack catalyzed primer and also the underwing radiator. Let's get started. Just like the fuselage mouldings back in part 2 then, we'll start with some wet sanding. First with 240 grit and finishing with 1200 grit with the sanding sponges. Then we'll apply and buff five layers of this paste wax giving plenty of time between each layer for it to fully dry. A coat of PVA release agent will ensure we can get the parts out of the mould after they're cured. The parts are laid up from three layers of 100 gram per square metre twill fibreglass cloth and epoxy resin. Each layer is wetted out one at a time. Whilst the resin is green, that's to say dry but not cured, we can trim the excess fibreglass around the edges of the mould with a sharp knife. And once completely cured, we can pop the parts out. This is one of the underwing radiators. Here I'm marking and sanding a rebate to accept the moulded wing centre section. Sanding the bottles of epoxy resin in a mug of warm water like this keeps it nice and thin and that makes it easier to mix and to work with. Well that's that lovely curvaceous centre section fitted. But now we need to locate the wings. So first, I have these two matching parts. There's this part that we need to glue in here, with this hole, and a similar part for the centre section. And I've cut a short piece of 4mm carbon fibre dowel to locate the front of the wings. Then, the matching part we're going to glue down here and this actually is the carburetor scoop on the full size aircraft. Having these two parts just there will mean that any air that's directed into this hole, because this will be blanked off behind, will be directed up into the cavity with the motor, the speed controller and the battery to keep it cool with the warm air exiting between the dummy exhaust stacks. Then we need a bolt at the rear to secure the wings and uh, when I moulded this section this part of the mould here is actually the identification light on the full size aircraft and I poured in some resin and microfibers to try and avoid getting an air bubble but it didn't work. As it happens it's an ideal place to put the bolt to secure the wings onto the fuselage. However we're going to need to just build up some of this area a little bit perhaps on the sides and the back of these spars just so it's a little bit stiffer for when we land on it.
that took a little bit of fiddling and fettling to get the wings to fit nicely. But now they do at least. And here we have the two underwing radiators about where they're going to go. We're not going to fit these just yet until the uh, surfaces are all primed and rubbed back because they're a bit in the way. But I just need to show you some of the problems that I came up against when we did this and how we got around them. So here we go. So firstly, I had to fit the elevator and rudder servos because the nut that anchors the wings there with the wing bolt is kind of in the way of everything. So I had to put these in first. And in hindsight, it would have been much easier if the tray would have been higher or the servos would have been mounted further forwards. And I'll show you why in just a second. Also, when I drilled this hole for the peg at the front of the wings, I got it a little bit wrong, so I had to file it out upwards so that the front of the wings sat nice and flush against the carburetor scoop. Uh, rather than just put some filler in here, which I'll do that in a moment too, but I had to put a plate on the back with a hole drilled um, just to locate the peg. Because the elevator servo there is lower than I was anticipating, the arm was touching the top of the wings, so I've cut this hole here to give it some clearance, some space to move in. And there's tons of room, and in, fair, in fairness, this sheeting isn't doing very much, other than giving a nice surface for the wing fairings to meet up against. I also made a bit of a mistake here when I glued this sheeting panel on, so I just put a bit of extra balsa on and sanded it back, as it's very soft balsa, it's uh, very easy to work with like that. Now we don't need access to the inside of the fuselage anymore. I'm going to both cut this area out, which is cut out on the full size, and I'm going to block in both cockpit floors with cross grain 16th balsa. Uh, we've got some voids to fill here and there, surface imperfections, which we'll do with two part catalyzed primer and then wet sanding and now we're going to go and cover the tail surfaces and that's another job done and finished. The tail surfaces got two coats of thinned sanding sealer sanding between coats before a coat of balsa lock which is a heat activated adhesive to help the covering stay stuck down. With a cool iron we tack down all the edges first before turning the temperature up and shrinking them tight. A coat of thinned clear shrinking dope seals the weave ready for paint. Now we'll just pop those surfaces on the plane so we can have a look at our progress so far. And that's all we have time for in this episode, so thanks for watching, join us next time for some more on this scratch built radio controlled two seat Spitfire build. <laughs>